I think we have reached the end of the era where people have these massive towers in their offices. It used to be a time where this is the only PC you can get. But these days, you can get something that's small like this or small like that. What I have over here is an Intel Nook with the 12th gen i5-1214P. And then on this side, we have something from AMD. Well, Minis Forum, but it is an AMD chip in there. This is Minis Forum UM690. It's got the Ryzen 6900HX processor. Now, both of them actually have 16 threads. One of them has 10 cores and one of them has eight cores but they both have 16 cores. So in this video, we're gonna be finding out which one is better. So no matter which size business you are, you might be looking at office PCs for your people who might be doing maybe only emails or checking stuff in, maybe NHS stuff for some kind of medical practice. You don't need a big tower, but you're looking for something small like that. They both also cost about the same price. The AMD one costs $730 here in the Amazon US right now. And then the Intel Nook goes around the same because it's got the $90 coupon code there, which means that it's gonna be 750, something like that. So they're $10 within each other. So let's take a look then. CCL is the one-stop shop for all your creative PC needs. With over 20 years of experience, they have developed a highly trained and rated customer service team based here in the UK. If you're not sure about your purchase, you can talk to an expert and you can have a peace of mind with their premium three-year warranty service that comes with their PCs. Use the code TN10 to get a special discount when spending over 250 pounds. Before your next purchase, check out CCL in the video description below. If you want to pick up any of these PCs, I'm going to leave them linked in the description below where you can find them there. I briefly mentioned the specs for you, but let's have a look at the Intel one here first. It's got 12 cores. I'm sorry, it's 12 cores, not 10 cores. It's got 12 cores and 16 threads. So it's got the hybrid architecture where you've got some performance cores and efficiency cores. This PC runs on DDR4, as you can see here, 3200 megahertz. We've got 32 gigabytes version and you can get a 16 gigabyte version as well if you want, but the RAM is exchangeable inside there, so you can upgrade later if you want to. You've got a M.2 SSD in there, this is 500 gigabytes. There's Wi-Fi 6E and we've got Intel XE graphics here integrated into this. So this is actually a mobile CPU, but they've packed it into such a small kind of PC. When we're looking at the Minis Forum or AMD side here, the UM690, then we can see that for CPU, we're running the 6900HX, it's got eight cores and 16 threads. So a little bit of different architecture. You've got just eight performance cores and you've got two threads per core. We've got only 16 gigabytes of RAM, but it's easily upgradable. But the interesting thing is this RAM is DDR5, as you can see that here. We've got 4,800 megahertz running in there. So these sticks are DDR5, which is very, very interesting. For SSD, there is 500 gigabytes of SSD there as well. We do have Wi-Fi 6E as well, as well as Radeon graphics that's integrated into that CPU there as well. So very, very similar systems. Now let's take a look at the CPU performance. We're gonna look at the AMD here on the side here first. I've got the hardware info 64 open here so we can see uh, total CPU package power. And as you can see, we're idling about 4.6, 4.2 watts here. And and this is awesome thing about the mobile CPUs, they idle very, very low wattages. So they're very, very energy efficient. So you don't need to worry about that. If you've got a big tower like that and you've got a desktop CPU, then any of the Ryzen CPUs will uh, idle like much, much, much higher than that. So let's hit go on the actual multi-core CPU test there, and then we'll see what's gonna happen. Let's see, we're pulling 64 watts, going down now to 54 watts, but we've only hit about 62 degrees there. So we've got loads of thermal room in there. We're only running 65 degrees, as you can see here. Let's do exactly the same thing here on the Intel side. Press start here, 36 watts, 63 watts, instantly 77 degrees, 81 degrees. Intel is running definitely, definitely hotter there. 90 degrees, still pushing 64, 63 there. Let's see if we're gonna go to thermal throttling or not. Right now, we're not thermal throttling, as you can see there. Okay, AMD has finished its score. What we can see is 
up to 64 watts pulled, 72 degrees maximum, and we've reached 13,000 points. That's, that's absolutely amazing. I mean, this is like the kind of class of Ryzen 5800X desktop size CPUs that pull like about 125 watts or something like that. Absolutely ridiculous. The lowest uh, CPU wattage here, interestingly, has been 3.9 watts. Let's have a look at on Intel's side and we've got 90 degrees maximum. We've pulled 64 watts from the socket max as well. So they're roughly pulling about the same power from there. But interestingly, the minimum wattage here as well is 1.6 watts minimum and it's idling about 1.8 to 3.5. So still half the idling power as AMD, which is interesting results there. We didn't thermal throttle, but we did reach 90 degrees there like. And this multi-core, we got 11,000 points. As you can see, AMD score is much, much better. I'm also going to start the single test in the background of both of these CPUs as well. So we can see which one is better at the single core performance as well. And we'll see the clock speeds after which one was better. While it's doing the single core test, let's check out the graphics power. So both of these have graphics, you know, in there. And when we're looking at the AMD score here on Geekbench 5 and we've got the OpenCL score, you can see we've scored 34,000 points. When we're going on the Intel side of things, you can see that Intel has scored only 14,709 points on the OpenCL. That is less than half of the performance of AMD. If we're looking at the Vulkan score test, then Intel has scored about 14,000 on the Vulkan score as well. But if you're looking at the AMD side on the Vulkan score, it's 28,000 points. So as you can see, AMD's graphics is twice as good as Intel's graphics here just on these benchmarks, which is just absolutely incredible. So right now, AMD looks like a much better pick of a mini PC than the Intel NUC here. When we're looking at the front panel IO here on the AMD side, you can see there's one USB 4 and then one Type-C 10 gigabit USB port there. Now, it's very clearly labeled, which I like to see. So the left one here is USB 4, and that one is the 10 gigabit USB-C. So two USB-Cs in the front. We've got a mic and headphone gumbo jack in there as well. And there's a little reset button on the side there as well. So when we're looking at the Intel's front IO ports, there is two USB Type-A ports. And as you can see, both of them are 10 gigabits ports and then one headphone and mic combo jack in the front there. Looking at the back of the PC, we can see that there is plenty of USB ports here on the AMD side. We've got four type A ports there. We've got two HDMI ports for your screens and monitors, and we've got one 2.5 gigabit LAN port here for your neck network connectivity. On the Intel side, we see kind of like an opening latch with screw holes over there, which we're gonna look at that in a moment, what that is. We've got two HDMI ports. So the HDMI ports are the same. We've got one 2.5 gigabit LAN, which is the same, but only two type A USB ports, whereas we had four on the AMD side. So AMD wins on the IO as well on there. Now, if you noticed, Intel doesn't have a single USB-C port on the devices, which could be a deal breaker for you. Interestingly, Intel's top little part of this um, PC actually can come off like the top lid you can get off and get a bit more cooling from the top there to get a bit more intake in there. Right now, both of them kind of sound about the same. Their fans are on, but they sound about the same. Okay, the single core test is done now. And when we're looking at the Intel score, we scored 1,649 points. And on the AMD, we've scored 1,576 points. So right now, the Intel is slightly faster in the single core test. It's not massively amount of different. It's less than 100 points, which is a few percent better on the Intel side, which equates to just maybe slightly, slightly snappier sometimes performance on the CPU and opening and closing programs or browsing around, something like that. So we've put the speedometer 2.0 on on the Intel side as well. But just looking at the clock speeds here what have been the maximum ones. So the P cores here we can see on Intel have reached 4.4 
gigahertz maximum there. And then the E calls have gone 3.3 gigahertz maximum there. We'll see what the speedometer test there does. We'll do exactly the same test on AMD. And when we're looking at the clock speeds here, the maximum the cores have actually reached is quite impressive. Look at that. Core 5 have has reached 4.9 gigahertz. That's very, 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 very fast. And the slowest we can see here is 4.7 on any of those scores. So that's seriously, seriously impressive from AMD side. Almost 5 gigahertz on that 6900HX. Now that is seriously impressive. The score on AMD we got is 238. The score on Intel we get is 225. So as you can see, even though the Cinebench R23 test showed a single core performance a bit better on Intel, the actual reality is when you're working on a browser or something like that, you can see AMD is slightly better actually, just because of the faster, higher clock speeds and you've got eight performance calls, which is, Amazing. Now, it might consume a little bit more power on idle state, so if that is important to you, then Intel might be the better pick for you. Let's take a look inside. On the AMD on Minis Forum, you will have to peel off your actual stands here, the rubber stands for your PC, which is slightly annoying in order to open up the PC that you have to do that. Now, the reason why I don't think this is good is just because of this reason here. This is actually user upgradable PC, right? You can upgrade the RAM and SSD and that. Why do we hide the screw holes here then? Okay, now that's the AMD PC in the inside. And now Intel. Uh, what I do like is that you do have this little arrow here that shows you which one is front and which one is back, which is not as clear on the AMD side here. Okay, when we're opening this up straight away, we see this little bit over here. There is already a SATA ports installed on the bottom of this there, but I'm slightly confused what is going on here. Why would you have this little extra kind of opening in the back over there? Because I thought you would be able to just slot in your, um, you know, PC, let's say the, the SSD in there, which would be the case if it was this here. But then this has been put in the wrong way. Would it go in? No, it doesn't go in. So if you undo these screws, all what happens is that just comes off. Oh, I guess you can install um, VGA. You can see there's VGA ports in the back over there. So you could probably pop that through and then get a VGA port as well or some kind of extension there. But it's not actually an SSD installation enclo enclosure. I thought this would give you just a quick M.2, uh, sorry, SATA SSD like installation there. So you can just install it in there. It doesn't look like it. When we're looking at the insides of this, the AMD one is actually slightly bigger here than Intel one, but Intel screws get stuck there. So I like that one much more. So you're not gonna lose your screws. So you can put 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive or drive in on the Intel side. We've got some heat sinks and thermal pads here as well. That is cooling the SSD in there. We've got the in Intel 670p SSD uh, installed there, the M.2. And then we've got another heatsink there for secondary M.2. And I think this is SATA there if you want to add another SATA or M.2 there as well. The RAM is crucial here and this is DDR4. On AMD side, as I showed you, you've got DDR5. And as you can see, these uh, they don't line up. They're not quite the same, so you can't interchange them. You can see that the actual voltage controller is on the chip there it's slightly different than ddr4 but interestingly ddr5 is more energy efficient as you can see this ddr5 runs at 1.1 volts but this runs at 1.2 volts on the ddr4 there on amd we've got another uh, m.2 ssd on the top there and then this m.2 on the amd actually has a heat sink on the top already so you can see that it's got this kind of a bit of metal put on the top there with a thermal pad underneath and then these rubber things on the top. I don't know which SSD this is, but I guess that doesn't matter. But we've got the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card that's uh, interchangeable there. But looks like AMD does not have a secondary M.2 slot, whereas Intel here does have that. So Intel's mini PC is slightly complicated to actually turn around on the other side. I don't want to ruin this uh, power button here, what they've done here. 
it's very nicely tucked in, but that's as much as it is. I managed to get this AMD um, like plugged out on the side here and we can see like the cooling here and we can see there's like two exhausts here. We've got a fan in there and then it sucks in from there, then blows out from that side and then that side, like exhaust from there. As you can see, there's two heat pipes going around there, one, two. I think they go around there and then kind of turn around in the middle there on the actual die. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Minis Forum actually uses liquid metal for the thermal paste, which makes the actual cooling that good and why it is that good as it is already. So one last thing what I wanted to check on this AMD PC was power limits. If we can increase them because we're running so like, you know, cool meaning like around 60 70 degrees we've got so much more thermal limit let's see if we can push it somewhere so the system configuration this is what i saw here this this is the only option i can seem to find is 65 watts rather than interesting it doesn't allow you to turn yourself to 65 watts only 45 54 but not 65 when you go 65 it turns it to 30 which is interesting we'll just put that one to auto again because 64 watts we were already running more than 64 anyway previously so i guess i'll leave that to auto the sustained power limits is a little bit that we'll put manually tj max as you can't actually you can't actually change them active memory timings nope no no power limits options there so in conclusion which one of these PCs would I go for? And to me, that's a no brainer. This one offers so much more value and performance for about the same price point. There's better IO, better performance in CPU and GPU department. Now I know you only get 16 gigabytes of DDR5, but that's easily upgradable. And DDR5 has become like the, you know, the prices have come down. So DDR5 pricing is the same as DDR4, it used to be. Now just DDR4 has dropped even more. So DDR4 is even more kind of affordable, but roughly about 64 gigabytes of DDR5 now costs around 250, uh, starting from around there, which used to be the case for DDR4. Now it's nice to see DDR4 in here, but I think this is a little bit expensive for what this is. If this is a few hundred dollars cheaper, then I think, mm, okay, we you know get the comparison there, but right now the AMD is a much better option there. So if you want to pick this one up, I'm going to leave it in the description below as well. Is there any use cases where you would go Intel over AMD? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.